everyone. It is George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I have uh, someone who's a very good friend of mine, uh, Mandy Freilich. She is an educator in Wisconsin. She does a ton of different things. I've known Mandy uh, for a very long time. Uh, to me, she's almost like a sister. We're, we're very close. And I asked her yesterday if she'd be on the podcast. And, you know, even though, so we're doing this one day later. And I just want to talk to her about some of the things that she's doing right now. But Mandy, thank you so much for being on here. I know that people are going to learn a lot from all the work that you do in education. So thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks for asking me. It's a total honor to be here. What, yeah, whatever. whatever. <laughs> okay, now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> whatever. It's just something people say. Yeah. No, no, it's good. And Mandy, like I, I, I've known Mandy for a long time and uh, I've worked with her in uh, some of her school districts. I know that she, you know, she, I've seen her speak at conferences, connect with a lot of people. And uh, can you actually just tell, um, tell people just kind of your education journey and what you're doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and first, I just wanted to say we met right after Innovators Mindset came out. Oh, right. Because um, it was like yeah. in, in Minnesota, right? Was yeah, like that one, conference. one of the first times. And I'll, um, I say this in uh, my next book, and I've said it a million times before, but Innovators Mindset and George are why I actually re-engaged back into education. So I have to give, always give kudos well, that's, for that. Well, that's obviously why we got you on the podcast. <laughs> And now we can end. Because you because you say <laughs> those nice things. Well, right. no, but yeah, like and I, I pre Mandy, I really believe that I share some good ideas in there, but it is always takes the person to do it themselves, right? Like I can share all the great ideas with you, but if you don't do anything with that, and so like it's not like you just read it and your life turned around. That's not like what it is, right? Like I think it's I think it's good, but you did the work and I want to make sure that's like I that's what I appreciate about you. So sorry, I interrupted you because I was just so excited to get a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well that was definitely the catalyst. I so um I was an elementary educator, uh, taught fourth and fifth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at one point. And um, then I was a tech integrator and then a director of innovation and technology. I recently retired from the school district. So now I consult full time and um, have a couple books out. I do a podcast called Teachers Aid through the BAM Radio Network, which is a social emotional support for teachers. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, and yeah, just trying to kind of get through this new era and education that we're in right now <laughs> with everyone else well it's actually i like one of the reasons i wanted to talk to you today is you have a very unique focus of the work that you're doing because i know that you're a tech director and um like i i always feel some discomfort when we're talking about tech director because it's not like yeah you had to like deal with like the setting up stuff and you know the logistical things but really you're, you're talking about like, you know, innovative ways kids could teach and learn. So I think that a lot of times when we, we say tech director, we kind of minimize the role they have for teaching and learning um, in, in educational leadership. But the other part that you do, which I find really fascinating because it's, it's something I really am really focused on is really kind of like the social emotional learning and the connection to innovation but really, you, you really talk a lot about um, mental health and also technology. And I think that right now, these things are, the connection between these two are more important than ever. So kind of like, how did you, and I know, and maybe I'm going to ask you a little bit to share this, Mandy. Like, I know that some of the stuff you share with the mental health stuff is based on your experience as a teacher, but like also personal experiences too, right? And why it's so mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, so I started talking about mental health a while back and it was kind of for a few different reasons, um, a few different situations that all happened at once. Um, one of them was I had gone through a really serious bout of depression that um, I felt very alone. And even though I had really fantastic coworkers at the time, didn't feel like I could really talk to them about it. And so I, I, <laughs> ironically, because you got me writing a uh, blog posts, I shot off a blog. And as soon as I did it, and it was kind of on depression, as soon as I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Like, I just, I wouldn't talk to my coworkers about it, but yet feel com felt comfortable enough to put it on my blog. And I immediately started getting all of these responses, one after another of just like, 
DMs where people said, you know, I so appreciate you putting this out there. I don't feel comfortable talking about it publicly. And, and there was, there was that, um, along with a situation where in the school I was at, there was a paraprofessional who, um, had gotten, just gotten back from the hospital, um, and had gotten a tetanus shot because she had been bitten by a student and had, had blood. And so you have to get a tetanus shot when that happens. Mm. And um, when I asked her to show me the bite, she lifted up her, um, her arms and she had bruises all up and down them. And I was like, what is going on? And I honestly thought, I thought something was happening at home. She was kind of a friend of mine. And, and so I'm like, what's happening? And she's like, oh, the kids are just really kind of violent, you know? And, and so I, when I'm working with them, they, they hit and kick and bite me a lot. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this is a thing. And, and I never want to minimize um, some of the struggles that our students have as far as what they can and cannot help with their behaviors. Um, but I also don't think that somebody should have to go to work feeling like they're going to be hit every day. And um, so I struggled through those types of mental health things uh, quite a bit and started to write more and more about it. And was kind of to, you know went back and forth between actual mental health, which everybody has, and is like self care and mindfulness and things like that, and mental health issues, which are like the anxiety and depression and and stuff, and started to really see a connection between people who are really struggling with the mental health issues, were some of the same people who struggled in the area of really taking on new initiatives or trying to be innovative in their classrooms or trying new learning with their students because they just didn't have the capacity uh, when dealing with major mental health issues to do both. And so I, I tried to start to talk about how they were related and things like that to try to address some of these issues. Yeah, I think, I think the, you know, kind of talking about, like, obviously, a lot of my focus is on innovation and i talk about the importance of relationships and people are like well that's not really the same thing i'm like well actually it is because there has to be like an emotional safety to try mm -hmm. different things right and i don't know um if you've experienced this but i actually like i i do write about some of my mental health struggles and i share those and i'll tell you people i don't get a ton of comments but i get a, a ton of emails and dms about that and mm -hmm. one that i received i was really surprised at was they thank me for sharing it because they know that I do have, you know, a lot of people that connect with me and they said they were terrified to share that they were dealing with depression because of the concern that they would lose their job mm -hmm. and that it wasn't like this was a, like just a worry. It actually had happened, right? Mm -hmm. that, that we see that and it really, I really struggle with the notion that because you might not be able to physically see it, right? Mm -hmm. As another person that it's almost downplayed where it's, it's something that we need to really, you know, make sure that people are okay. And, and I, like, I, is that like a, is that like a thing? Like, have you heard of that before where people are concerned about sharing that because of their employers? Yeah, absolutely. I've, um, I've heard people actually being brought in front of the board of education because, oh, you know, of their school districts because of it. I have, I've heard, you know, it run the, runs the gamut on what I've heard. Um, and it's, you, you know, I don't, it's, it's such a, it is such a difficult thing because one of the first pieces of healing ever is to be able to name what's going on. And, and I kind of use the, the analogy sometimes, like if your arm's not working and this is silly, but if your arm's not working and you don't know why you're like, Oh, what's wrong with me? Why is my arm not working? This is so stupid. I should be able to control my arm and I should be able to get it working. But if I say to you, your arm is broken and we're like, Oh, we sent you to a doctor, you get it casted, you know, what's wrong with it. You can say, Oh, I'm going to heal in so much, you know, so much time. If I do the work and take care of myself, like that's a lot easier to handle. And it's kind of the same thing with mental health issues when you can name it. Um, all of a sudden that's the first step in healing. Well, if we're all, all of a sudden telling people you can't admit it, like where are you supposed to go with that? And it makes you feel alone and, and isolated and that just adds to the issue. And so it is a legitimate concern. Um, I had a, a friend who had created a video um, about his mental health issues and 
uh, was brought before the board and uh, they were looking at potentially laying him off until his issues were better. And, and I, um, you know, I didn't, I really didn't even know what to say. It feels so wrong. Yeah. And as a, as a teacher, when I was teaching, I, I always felt guilty for this, but not guilty enough not to do it. And I'm trying to give people this advice too. There were some days that I was totally physically fine, but I just could not go to work that day. Mm -hmm. Like I just couldn't, I just couldn't deal with kids. I, I couldn't deal with but adults, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't just kids, it's adults too that we can sometimes have issues with. And I would just take a day off. Like I would just take a sick day and say like, hey, I'm just not feeling well. Mm -hmm. And like, really, you shouldn't quite, like, if that's what I'm saying, then that's what it is. I'm not going to like fake a cough. Right. That's not what the issue is. And just sometimes taking that day was all that I needed. And I know that I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying this for me, right? As you said, it's complicated. Everyone has totally unique and different circumstances. But then when I became a principal, I made sure that was very clear to my staff that if you, because you can't physically see something, um, that doesn't mean that you don't use those sick days uh, for that time. You don't do this. If you need help, reach out. Um, I, I like those sick days are not just for that. And, you know, I think to me, it was really, really important that my staff knew that it was okay. I was there for them, but this is not a place where they are going to be judged because they had something that I could not physically see. And I remember distinctly talking to one of my staff members and I knew she was struggling with something. And I said, like, you need to go home. Like, you need to go home. And I know sometimes that actually being around people is the best thing. But I knew her well enough to know. And she said, well, I'm not sick. I'm like, but you're struggling mentally. And you're going to, if you stay here today, I'm telling you, you're going to do, you're going to be at 50% for five days. I'd rather you go home and be 100% for four. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's better. And, like, one last thing. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of overtaking this. No. The, um, the, I'm really big on the idea, like we always do what's best for kids. Like I'm really mm -hmm. big. And what a lot of people here say is like, hey, forget the adults. It's all about the kids. <laughs> yep. And that's, not, that's never what that intention is. It's that right. you actually, you do everything to serve the adults. So to make sure that it's best for kids. And right. I think that's, that's a really important element. And if you think about it in the idea of like customer service in any other organization, when, like when I work, go through an airline and they say, well, I can't deal with that uh, because that's like above my pay grade, I'm not allowed to. But then the company says, well, it's all about the best for the customer. Well, the best thing for the customer is not making 84 phone calls to actually get the answer this person knew just by common sense, what was the right thing to do. So mm -hmm. like really, it's same thing in education. When you do your best to support all the adults who serve kids, right? Like that's, that is what's doing best for kids. And I think a lot <laughs> right. of times when people, they, they hear that. And so I just like, what are, what are some of the strategies like that you've seen uh, school districts because I know like there's obviously we, there's things we could do for ourselves, but what have, what have you seen as like schools or school districts do that have been effective in kind of addressing some of these issues? Yeah, well, um, back to what you said, I think uh, one of the things that you can do is to make it very clear that um, mental health days are okay to take for your sick days. Mm -hmm. And that also means that if that teacher uh, needs to sit in a coffee shop and have lunch with or coffee with their sister to where it looks like they're using their sick day just to be social, you need to be okay with that because that is them addressing their mental health. So mm -hmm. just because someone takes a mental health day does not require them to sit at home and do nothing. You know, it's time to rest. It's time to rejuvenate. It's time to do self-care, however you see self-care. And if it's like talking to somebody that is important to you, then that needs to be okay. Um, can I just, can I just say something real quick about what you just yeah, said? Yeah, absolutely. I can see it coming. <laughs> no, because this, I, I love what you just said, but I know what some people are going to say. Well, some people are going to take advantage of that. Yeah. Some people are, but yep. then you're going to hurt 95% of people who, who won't like that. That's right. I hate when that happens in, in schools and districts that we make rules because some people might do something bad with that rule, but the majority yes. will benefit. 
right? So I just mm-hmm. had to add that because I think it's like really important that you just shared that, but don't hold back because somebody might do something wrong with that. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. Right? So absolutely. Sorry, I, sorry I interrupted you, man. No, that's fine. Um, another thing that I've asked school districts to take a look at um, has to do, it's kind of out of um, the teacher's hands per se and more to do with the administration is to really understand what you're offering with your health insurance when you purchase it uh, for teachers and and what is covered and um, like I'll, I, I give this example and it's a very very personal example but it's true um, I had gone uh, through a, a super difficult time with my depression and I'm like I, I just I need to see somebody and um, so I went to make um, uh, an appointment and I had to call from school because I was at school the entire time that the places were open. And so um, I, I went to my website of my insurance. There were um, places that said that, you know, that the doctors were taking new, uh, new patients and I would call and, and they would say, no, that's not true. And so I called like 14 different places. All of them kept saying, you know, we can't take anyone. We can't take anyone. And to be totally honest, my um, suicidal tendencies were through the roof. And so I finally got a hold of a place that said, um, you know, that they, they had uh, a, an appointment three months out. And I said, um, well, I feel like, you know, I, I'm at the spot where I might harm myself and, and is there anything that's sooner? And I, and I couldn't make this up. The lady said to me, well, are you going to kill yourself today? And I'm like, and, and I had to think about it. And I'm like, well, I kill myself today. Like, it was just, it was such a far out question for me to even wrap my mind around what she was saying. And right away I started thinking about you know, what people were going to say in the, in, in the teacher's lounge, if they ever found out that, you know, I had to leave work that day and go into some sort of mental health facility. And, and so I said, no, not today. And she said, well, then you can take the one that's three months out. And, um, and I remember, I remember hanging up and I was in my office. I had to plaster a smile on my face, walk out, uh, you know, by the students and, and continue on with my day. And so part of it is really understanding that when you are saying you have insurance that covers mental health services, what does that actually mean? And how can you get people help quicker that Mm -hmm. actually need that support? That is just mind blowing that that actually happened. And I'm just terribly sorry. And just, just to note, like, um, Mandy and I, neither of us, we're talking about this. We're talking about from personal experiences, but obviously we're not, doctors we're not medical yep. professionals that's not what we're addressing but one of the things that you said and this is i, I read this and i just kind of wonder your thoughts on this on this statement is that a lot of schools right now are focusing on the importance of mental health for the adults mm-hmm because of the mental health issues the school systems have created for the adults like it's like we created a problem and now we're saying like hey we know we're stressing you out so like maybe we should do yoga right not not (laughs) addressing not addressing the thing that actually is causing the stress do you know what i mean and and i Uh think like for example uh school for me i could say like there's some stress obviously you know but it was a very joyous thing Mm -hmm. but some of the articles i read from students right now it's like basically academics everything is like if you don't get this you're gonna like lose out let's like a kindergarten get focused on career and college ready Mm -hmm. and like you know make sure that you're already thinking about what college you're going to and they're like why are kids like so stressed out i'm like it's kind of like we're doing that right and Mm -hmm. i think that sometimes we're we're not actually identifying the the root cause of the issues but we're trying to provide band-aids and, mm-hmm. I, and I, don't, I don't know if that what you think of that because i because when i read like i that is not mine i read that and I, I about like basically how we are trying to solve the problems we've created you know through mental health but not actually addressing the actual issues that are causing the, the mental health 
um, struggles. So any mm -hmm. thoughts on that idea? Yeah, well, I, I think, um, you know, what you said before about how when we focus on students for a long time, our in order, like we have taken in order to focus on students, we basically have to throw teachers under the bus, right? Like it, there have been a lot, some districts who that in order to focus on students, they have completely ignored anything that the teachers needed in order to, to do that. And I think, um, you know, it's, it, we have created the issue in that way. I also think that it, mental health, like both mental health and mental health issues are so difficult to address because they're so personal. You know, it, like there are people who can absolutely have a very bad case uh, or a very bad bout with depression who can go on function functioning pretty normally mm -hmm. in front of people and then you can have people who have kind of that same level who can't get out of bed and like ne neither of them are right or wrong they just are but it's very difficult to try to address that and um and there's a lot of mental health issues that don't even start within our schools. And so uh, one of the things that I talk about, for example, is secondary traumatic stress. And secondary traumatic stress is when you work with students and they are, have trauma backgrounds and you hear their stories over and over and you're empathetic and you can develop the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder from this. Even that looks different if you actually have post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's, like I, I agree to a point that we have maybe caused some of the stress and, and issues that are happening right now and we're trying to clean that up. I, actually, I wouldn't even say we're trying to clean it up yet. We're trying to figure out how we can even start cleaning right. it up. Right. But we also aren't responsible for some of the things going on that actually come into school that we have nothing to do with. Right. Yeah, and that's... I just I'm like I'm listening to you and like I know for me personally and I've talked about my struggles with depression and anxiety often I actually have been on because I think it's not like this person is this and this person could be like this it actually could be this person ranges because mm -hmm. I'm like yeah some days I'm totally fine and some days yeah I'm that person as well and so I I, I appreciate you doing that because like it's it looks like as you're using the broken arm analogy, we know a broken arm and we kind of know the process of getting it healed and mm -hmm. that's it. But it's so different for how we deal with things, you know, what will work for some. And like I said, we're not doctors. We're not, this is not what we're talking about. Kind of more talking about from a, you know, personal standpoint, but it is, I think sometimes it is also, as we were talking earlier, that stress that is faced by educators is then kind of trickled down to students in, in oh, many sure. ways, right? Like, mm -hmm. do you see that there's a, there's a connection there from what your, your work sees? Oh yeah, absolutely. And because, you know, if you, well, depending up a little bit on how that educator, um, you know, how their mental health issues manifest, that can, that can change too. But like some people, when their anxiety is bad or their depression is bad, or if they were to get, the post uh, um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, if they were to do those things, they're going to act differently towards their students. Um, even, even in the case of burnout, burnout is an actual medical diagnosis right now. Like you can go to the doctor and get diagnosed with burnout. Um, and part of burnout is to, to heal burnout is to pull back on the things that, that are burning you out. And so you know, a teacher who's like in the process of pulling back, trying to, to fill their cup back up, trying to get their energy back, that's, that kind of teacher is going to look different than the one that is just running themselves ragged and, and you know, maybe, um, you know, blowing up or getting super angry at students for, for things that they wouldn't normally get angry about. And so it can, it can definitely trickle down to the students as well. And, and kids copy what they see, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even if they're not depressed themselves or have anxiety themselves, like kids will start to mimic some of our behaviors in the classroom, uh, mm -hmm. particularly at the elementary level. Yeah, I know this for me, like we were talking earlier, you know, like I said, 
So the thing that's really interesting, and before we even got this conversation, Mandy talks a lot about, you know, you know, mental health uh, and ways we can support, you know, staff, students, but she's also working tech director and uh, saying earlier, the notion of innovation, uh, which I'm really passionate about, obviously, is directly connected to this because if I am not supported, if I'm not uh, feeling uh, mentally, emotionally, psychologically safe, it's really hard for me to try things that I'm scared will fail because it could snowball into to other mm -hmm. issues. So it's not like it's not like these are disconnected. In fact, they're actually very connected, which is why I talk about relationships. And if I know that the people that I work with have my back, I'm more likely to feel comfortable taking risks. And it's not like, it's not like you only, this is only important for people that, and I think we all deal with mental health to some degree, every person. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need to be, I, the feeling that people have to be diagnosed to get that support. It should be, that should be the norm. And like this, this is for me, I know this is a really weird thing to say. I actually always assume that every person I interact with online that I can't see face to face is going through some mental health struggles. And I always treat them with kindness and, and trying to be thoughtful because I don't know what's going on on the other side of the screen. And mm -hmm. if I always act that way, I'm always safe. But if I mm -hmm. just don't even care, then yeah. And I think that's for me, like how we interact, because you said we copy one another mm -hmm. in a lot of the work that we do. And so, you know, when kids are doing like, when kids are doing that, but they're watching adults do that to one another and being nasty, it's like, oh, that's horrible. But then, hmm. you know, as, but I want to be that, you know, personally, I always think about like my, like I, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes and we all can grow. But I always think about my daughters looking at how I interact with people 20 years from now and I hope she'll be proud. And I know that <laughs> seems kind of ridiculous, but it's just something yeah. I've been focused on. But Manny, the, you actually, um, one of the things you talk about uh, quite a bit is teacher engagement. Mm -hmm. And I know you actually have, um, and I, you have a, a, a book coming out called, is it Reignite the Flames? Mm -hmm. yep, talking about right. teacher engagement. Can you tell us a little bit about that book and, and like what's going on? Like what's it about? What's what, what problem is it solving? What are you talking about there? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm super excited about Reignite the Flames. Um, what I did is I kind of took all of the things that I've been talking about and researching and saying for the last few years and put them all into one spot is basically what Reignite the Flames is. And um, I came up with a uh, more robust, I guess, definition for teacher engagement and disengagement. And um, because a lot of times when I say teacher engagement, uh, people get sort of irritated. Like they think that I'm saying, well, um, you know, you should be happy all the time. You should, you should be engaged in your, uh, in your work a, a thousand percent all the time. And, and it's actually way more than that. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that when I defined it, um, that the definition sort of fit what I was uh, what I was talking about, and so what I did is I took the definition, the psychological definition of emotional engagement, and sort of coupled it with what we do in teaching, and um, and it, so you know emotional engagement and 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 teacher engagement really is about like finding what your purpose is in education and and understanding that it's not you're not going to like every single thing that you do all the time um but overall you are you know filled with purpose you are um emotionally engaged um you you feel that self-efficacy and and so then there is kind of the opposite of that as well so like if you're going to talk about engagement you know you have to talk about disengagement and, um, and I don't think that disengagement is purposeful. Like somebody said to me, well, if somebody leaves a school district, that's disengaging. And I'm like, no, they, dis they emotionally disengaged long before that, if that's what happens. Right, right. Um, and so the opposite, of, uh, the opposite of engagement and being disengagement is that they just don't care anymore. They're kind of apathetic to what happens. They can be kind of, um, you know, vocal about, you know, uh, that, nothing ever changes in education, no matter what they did, it wouldn't change. And, and um, so I wanted to address that. And I wanted to address it from a very simple standpoint of 
that I believe that people deserve to be happy in what they do, particularly in a profession that is, um, you know, more like a calling than anything else. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I could say, I could say lots of things about engagement. I could say like, it's, it's better for students. It's better for the climate and culture, because if you have a bunch of disengaged teachers, it's going to negatively affect the building. Um, you know, like I could, I could say engagement for a lot of different ways, but it really, when I re-engaged, it really was because I just, I was so tired of being angry and sad all the time about my job in a job that I absolutely loved years before. Mm -hmm. And so my goal with the book is really to help people understand why they may have disengaged. Um, and from that, how they can, how I re-engaged, hoping that that process may help them as well. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of like, I always appreciate your kind words about the impact my book had on you and, you know, connecting with me. It, but the reason I do the work is like this conversation, the stuff that you're sharing about that we are so better off because you re-engaged, right? Like we all benefit from you, Mandy, from doing this work and sharing that. And so that's okay. like, that's, I really, you know, that like to me, as I'm listening to you and listening to all these great insights and what you're sharing, like what an honor to even be mentioned as part of your journey, because I know that you've benefited so many educators. And so really, if you, I know that it's coming out in the middle of May, uh, Sarah Thomas with Edu Match Books, Sarah Thomas and Edu Match Books, absolutely incredible uh, organization. Sarah's incredible. So mm -hmm. make sure you check it out because I know that it's going to really connect with you. And so kind of about the ideas that we're talking about, the last question I'm going to ask you um, today, Mandy, is all this stuff with coronavirus and, and what's happening and how people, you know, are dealing with this. Like, what is the best advice you could give to people right now, you know, from your experience and from your work that, you know, you connect to what we talked about today? Yeah, so um, I think that probably there's, you know, there's so much. I think that people need to give themselves grace on, on what they should be doing and what they are doing and, and learn to, to kind of let go of the things that they can't control. Like, there's kind of all of those things. But I really do think that, to start focusing on, on resilience and what resilience actually means. And, you know, like I, um, I've been saying for years that people used to say to me, well, if you're resilient, you, um, you, you know, pop back to the person that you were before. And, and it's not, it's not, it's not about that. Being resilient means that once you get to a place after an adversity, you are happy with who you've become. And it's going to be the same thing at almost kind of an organizational level when we get back. Um, the quicker you understand that things are not going to be the same, the faster you're going to be able to adapt to how they are going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that, you know, starting to kind of wrap your mind around um, how you can work towards resilience and what that's going to look like at the end is going to ultimately be better for your mental health. Uh, there's so much I could talk to you forever, Mandy. Um, <laughs> so really, I really appreciate that topic. And it's interesting because I've, we've talked a million times mm -hmm. and I just learned a ton about you and I really appreciate your vulnerability sharing, you know, the stories. And for me, um, the work that I've done, I was actually, and I mentioned her all the time, Kelly Wilkins was my associate superintendent and she did everything to empower me. And I just saw she did the same you know, thing that you mentioned earlier, she really re-engaged me in education and my whole focus of the work that I do is to try to help really empower other people's voices. And I know that everything that you've done, it, it has really helped so many educators around the world talk about things that maybe they were not comfortable talking about before because of your voice. So I just want to thank you for all the work that you do. Thanks for connecting. Uh, anyone listening, make sure uh, you check out Mandy's book, but she's got a ton of great stuff on her blog too. And she shares a lot. And I, I really appreciate you, Mandy. So I thank yeah. you for being here today.
Me too. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you as well. And, and I'm excited. Well, I'm, I was excited I'm, to be here. I'm your big brother. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of, right. you kind of had to, I had to, I didn't have a to. choice. I was like, ah, uh, so Hey everyone, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day, Mandy. Thank you so much for being a part of today. Uh, really, I really learned a lot and yeah, it made me think a lot about some of the stuff I'm going through right now and I can, be resilient, as you said, kind of to grow forward. So thanks for listening, Thank everybody. Have a great day.